Hi, my name is Moya McTeer. You might remember me from one of the Trappist videos that I did a few months ago. But in this video, I'm going to be talking about super telescopes. And by that, I just mean really freaking big telescopes. So historically, the biggest telescopes have been radio telescopes. The biggest radio telescope in the world is the Arecibo dish, and that's in Arecibo in Puerto Rico. It's 300 meters across. And that's actually the biggest non-movable telescope. Um, so it's built into this valley and it looks up uh, at the sky and as the sky moves, so does the, the image that the telescope is taking. But if you're interested in the biggest movable telescope in the world, then that's the Green Bank Telescope or the GBT in Green Bank, West Virginia. It's 100 meters across, so just about the size of a football field and it sits in the National Radio Astronomy Observatory's radio quiet zone. That means that people who live around this telescope can't use Wi-Fi, they have to have their microwaves in Faraday cages to block the radiation, and they have to drive special cars. And they have to do all this so that the, the signals coming from their phones or their cars or their microwave or whatever don't interfere with the signals that the telescope is trying to detect from outer space. If these don't look like telescopes to you, that's probably because you're used to seeing optical telescopes. Optical telescopes are difficult to make really large because once you get above 10 or 15 meters in diameter, the weight of the mirror actually weighs down the mirror itself, and that causes it to bend, which can interfere with the signal we're seeing in space. Optical telescopes need to be made out of mirrors because the wavelengths of optical light are so much smaller than the wavelengths of radio light. And that means the, the surface that we use to detect them has to be a lot smoother. And you know, this might make sense. If you wanna see a reflection of something optical, you look in a mirror. That's why you can see yourself reflected every morning when you get up and do your makeup or brush your teeth. So the technology that we've come up with to make optical mirrors bigger than 10 or 15 meters in diameter is something called segmented mirrors. And that's pretty much exactly what it sounds like. Instead of building an entire circle of a mirror that's 10 or 15 meters in diameter, we break it up into smaller sections. These sections can be one or two meters in diameter, uh, and if you put them together kind of like a fly's eye, then you get a really big mirror that works just like one. So now I'm going to talk about some of the really big telescopes that are going to come online in the next couple of decades. The smallest of these big telescopes, and I say smallest because because it's at least 10 meters bigger in diameter than some of the biggest telescopes that existed before, is the Giant Magellan Telescope, or the GMT. The GMT will be 25 meters in diameter, and its site is La Serena in Chile. First light for the GMT, that's just an astronomer's way of saying this telescope will be usable in 2021. The next biggest of these super telescopes is the 30 meter telescope, or the TMT. And based on its name, you can probably figure out that its diameter will be 30 meters. Originally, this telescope was going to be placed on top of Mauna Kea, which is an observatory in Hawaii. There was some conflict around that location, and I'll talk about that later in the video, but now the TMT is planned to be built in La Palma, Spain. Before all of this conflict that happened in Hawaii, the first light for the TMT was planned for 2022, but now uh, we're not really sure when it's going to be in operation. The next biggest telescope is the European Extremely Large Telescope, or the EELT for short. As you can see, astronomers are really creative when it comes to naming these telescopes. Uh, that was sarcasm. The EELT is going to be about 40 meters in diameter and will go in the Atacama Desert in Chile. First light for the ELT is planned for 2024. So the EELT is the biggest telescope that currently has funding and a site planned, but there are bigger telescopes that people are thinking of building. The next biggest one is Colossus, which would be 70 meters in diameter. And the one after that is the overwhelmingly large telescope or OWL, and that would be 100 meters in diameter. That's as big as the Green Bank Telescope, except this one would be optical. So we're talking about a mirror, or really a series of mirrors put together, 
that's as big as a football field, which is amazing. There's not a site planned or funding procured for Colossus or OWL, but if you actually track the sizes of telescopes, of optical telescopes that we've had through time, we should have an OWL-sized telescope by 2040, which is really exciting. So I've told you about all of these really big telescopes, and you can see that we're pushing for bigger and bigger mirrors. But why is bigger better when it comes to astronomy? The answer to that has to do with something called angular resolution. The angular resolution of a telescope depends on the telescope's diameter. And angular resolution is a way for astronomers to figure out how uh, small of a separation a telescope would be able to see on a distant object. Now, it's probably easier to explain that with an example. The EELT, which will have a diameter of 40 meters and will observe in optical wavelengths, will have an angular resolution of 0 0.003 arc seconds. If you don't know what an arc second is, that's okay. I didn't know what an arc second was before I was an astronomer. An arc minute is 1 60th of a degree. An arc second is 1 60th of an arc minute. So you can do all the math in your head for that, but just trust me, the angular resolution for the EELT is really really small. In fact, it's so small that if you take the ELT and you point it at the moon, you'd be able to see six meters of separation on the moon. That means that if you take the ELT and you point it at the moon, you'd be able to see individual houses uh, in a row. You'd be able to separate one house from another. In fact, you'd probably be able to separate the cars that are in those houses' driveways, which is incredible. Not that there are houses and cars on the moon. Now, when we're talking about giant telescopes, it's also really important to talk about where we put them. In astronomy, we want our data to be high quality. That's how we do high quality science. But to get high quality data on a telescope, the telescope needs to be in a place that's pretty dry, so moisture doesn't mess with the equipment or the signal it's getting. And you want it to be pretty high up so that the telescope doesn't have to see through a lot of atmosphere, which can also interfere with the signal it gets. The problem though, is that those high and dry places are usually mountains that are also sacred to people who have lived on that land for a long time. The conflict that I talked about earlier with the TMT is that they were going to build the telescope on top of Mauna Kea, which is a sacred mountain in Hawaiian culture. When they announced that they were going to build this giant telescope there, uh, there was a group of Hawaiians who came and protested the construction of this telescope. They halted construction for a really long time and eventually took this matter to the Hawaiian Supreme Court. It's still there, decisions are still being made about the TMT, but the group that was going to build the TMT, they decided that they were still spending money on this project while they were waiting for the Hawaiian Supreme Court to make their decision. So they decided it was cheaper to just move it to La Palma, Spain. So what do you think? Should the TMT have stayed on Mauna Kea in Hawaii so astronomers can get the best data possible? Or should it have moved to La Palma, Spain so that astronomers can respect the religious and environmental concerns of the people who are protesting the construction? We'd love to hear your thoughts. Please put them in the comments below. I think that's all I have to say about super telescopes. If you have any questions, of course, you can put them in the comments and we'll get back to you. But if you like this video and you want to see others like it, then you should definitely subscribe to the Cool World's YouTube channel. Thanks for listening. Bye.